evening, everyone. I trust that all of you are well, that you are blessed, and wherever it is that you are indeed tuning in from tonight, that you are ready for what's going to be a very, very exciting time in the presence of the Lord. Uh, what an exciting week it has already been with so much happening, uh, really just behind the scenes and uh, in and around the ministry of Dominion, Dominion Church, and every single one of you as Dominion that are standing with us, that are pioneering with us. Uh, I just want to, again, just give you, each and every one of you, a big, big, big shout out. And um, exciting things are most definitely happening in and around the Dominion. Speaking of which, this week we actually launched the Dominion Bible. And uh, it truly has been incredible with the response that we had gotten uh, even just prior to getting onto the broadcast tonight. Uh, receiving a message from someone who was watching during one of my other laws, uh, my other live broadcasts last night, and uh, with my guest from the United States, and uh, as a result, people inquiring, people asking about the Dominion Bible School, and uh, so once more, Dominion Bible School is available to each and every one. There is not a particular time for an intake, so it's not as though we are going to necessarily say to you applications are now open because applications are open and it remains open. So you can start at any time. You can study at your own pace. And also, you can literally study from wherever in the world that you may be from. Even tomorrow night, as I'm going to be uh, going live with uh, my father, many of you would know him as Pastor Carl or Dr. Carl. So I'm going to be uh, talking with him tomorrow at 8 p.m. And uh, so tomorrow, we we actually be talking to... Uh, someone as well from uh, the area of South Sudan, where my father got involved and um, incredible things that happened. And uh, it's been interesting to see even um, getting the feedback and the response after what has been almost 20 years and uh, to see the work that was started and to see how far not a community nation of South Sudan has actually come. So coming back to where we're finding ourselves tonight, and I want to welcome each and every one of you. Welcome to tonight's live broadcast. And I'm really excited to be sharing this evening with you. And uh, in the comments, do let me know where you are, in fact, watching from. And um, you are watching my page or if you're watching on Chantel's page. Uh, we are obviously um, live on all of those pages. If you could go to the Dominion Church page. You'll find that's the one where we just celebrated going over 2,000 followers. If you could quickly hop onto that particular page, it would be great uh, to connect with you there because then I would be able to even see all as they come in. So that's going to be happening as well, and it's coming your way. Also, um, before we get everything ready for all of my guests tonight, um, in essence, co-hosts, co-host guests tonight, uh, I'd like for you to uh, get ready because, um, you know, we are in for something really special and as if in a, a lovely treat. But um, let me get just a, a few people up and out so everyone is ready. So as uh, we get ready, I welcome my guests and also co-hosts for this evening, Hilton and Charlene, but then also as an added bonus tonight, Chantel is joining us as well. So, Hilton, Pauline, welcome to tonight's broadcast. Good to have you with me again. Hello, Pastor Kevin and Pastor Chantel. Hello, Hello everyone. Phenomenal. It's so good to be here and to just share a little bit with everyone. Wonderful. Mm, the goodness of God. Okay, so hopefully your camera is all, because now we're all watching you get your camera ready. Uh, so Hilton, Charlene, I trust that you guys are ready for this evening. What a phenomenal week it has been. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's been a very, very interesting week. And it's been, um, it was, I mean, since Sunday, even last night, and even going in today, it's really been a, um, a just in growth and just seeing things changing and um, just almost that urgency of, of people everywhere um, feels like tomorrow or 
something soon big is going to happen. And it's just that anticipation, which has really been exciting and, and driving us, um, which we experienced today, just doing a bit of, of quick rounds of shopping, that everything just looked as if everybody was rushing to something really big um, happening soon. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, so you mean just in the natural, like it's mm -hmm. the, there's a rush to get things done, to prepare for the year end, things like that. Yeah, and I think also with, where people are starting to uh, almost be re-energized um, in terms of, because usually the start of the year people are either slowing down, preparing to do the least bit of work. Um, and you, uh, today I heard where staff were saying, you know, they, can't believe it's almost time for um, the festive season and yet they've got more work to do and just uh, I found it almost an opportunity to really um, encourage them on, on a spiritual level um, because a lot of them are trying to get over that point where they can just switch off and just in um, take a break from, from the everyday pressure um, but also I think seeking, how do we get through the next four to five weeks before everything closes down and you go into the next season of rush and moving. Um, so it is, it's a, I find it's a, it's a good opportunity to really start um, spreading the word and just encouraging people on a spiritual level that there's something better to look forward to than just a break from the, the mundane work that they are doing. Mm, that's very powerful. And I mean, on Sunday, um, it was so profound for me when we had our baptism after church with so many people just making that decision to act in obedience. And it was just lovely for me to just do the basic foundational things that Jesus have commanded us to do, because those are the acts of obedience that has such a magnificent um, and, and great impact on our spiritual lives. And if you think back on yourselves, the way you started with your walk with Jesus, where all of those little things you did is so big. I mean, that's like you, you then suddenly hear God speak to you. You feel free from all the burdens that you carried and so forth. So I have really found that just getting back to those, those almost like he says, the joy of your salvation. Mm -hmm. And then I believe last night, Charlene, when you were going through the spiritual gifts and, and helping to ignite people to what is your purpose on earth? Because we can get into this trap of we fall... Um, or we fall into the trap of we go to church because, but it also becomes a thing of there's nothing more. Who am I really? So yeah. maybe we can share for a moment on that, Charlene, even what you experienced last night. And then maybe for those watching tonight, if you want to learn a little bit more about what are your giftings, who did God make you to be, and the uniqueness that you carry, that there is a reason for that, that you've got people that you can minister to in a way that God has preordained for you. So, Charlene, will you take us through that for a second? Yes, well, last night was such a fantastic evening because, you know, we always learn when, when we also teach other people or share with other people as God then shares with us as well. And just that reminder again of who we actually are and who He is within us. So we really looked at the gifts that um, the Father has given, that Jesus has given, that the Holy Spirit has given us, and the, the dynamics that's available for us in the kingdom. It really is just up to us to say, yes, Lord, I want everything that you have for me. I want my full inheritance. I want to run wow. after the call. And I'm prepared to lay down everything. It really comes down to a choice. Do I want to live yes. a mediocre life? Mm. Do I want to have an extraordinary life? Or do I just want to take up space, for lack of a better word, until I'm Come no on. longer here? Yeah. But I have to make impact. And it starts with finding out, what is my assignment? I mean, mm. when you come to our church and when you listen to the the um, live stream as well, you'll see in the intro videos, there's a, a voice and we say like, who are you and, and why are you here? What are, what are you mm. supposed to be right. doing with your life? And those are the two biggest questions that people have. And through opening the word and through just really asking the Holy Spirit to reveal the word and what is inside of us once we've accepted Christ, um, we actually see why we act the way we do, why we feel drawn to certain things, why we have certain passions and desires, and what things makes us sad, what things makes us um, 
ecstatic, those things that we will do without necessarily getting money for it, those are all mm. clues to what we are called to do, the, the problem we are designed mm. to solve. And I think that's the major thing that we all took away from last night is we all have a problem that we are supposed to solve. And it's finding out what that problem is and solving that. And that the, your assignment is crucial because that is where your financial prosperity, your abundance, everything is locked up in. And it was just such a joy to see people rediscover that and to reawaken with there is so much more to this life and the more is within us. Um, in the person of Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God. So very exciting for, for where we are going to as a church and in the kingdom at large. Um, I really think it's a time where, where it's, you know, it's high time that we take our eyes off others, stop comparing and focus on Jesus Christ yeah. and what is inside of us and bring it forth and, you know, become effective disciples and disciple others. Amen. Mm. Yeah, I also, I also experienced the last night that it was a, um, you just saw, even with some of the people that went through baptism on Sunday, just that hunger and just that, um, uh, I would say, just trying to get identity and knowing what's the next step, what's the mm -hmm. next thing that we do. Um, because we sometimes, and I also have to revisit just exploring what my gift in, gifts are. And um, it's where people really, I think it gives you that purpose, identity and knowing who you are and why you are doing right. what you are doing for one and why you are in the environment that you God has placed you in. And that for me was just really um, telling last night in terms of just re reestablishing that, um, that um, identity and, and knowing what I, I need to do and where I need to fit in. So what are your predominant gifts, Ilden? Mine, um, I think mine is more serving. And um, yeah, it's, it's my predominant gift is serving. Although I, I find myself mm -hmm. having to lead people more, I find that um, through serving them, it's, um, it makes me a better leader than just coming in and leading and not knowing what people are going through in terms of their duties or jobs. So. I've always found myself where I, with any of my assistants um, that worked with me that I did more of understood what they were going through and assisting them with their work. Um, and that just encouraged them to move forward and to, to develop themselves. Um, and some of them over the years have, have moved into very senior positions in wow. certain areas. So, you know, I, at times I thought, oh, I will never get there but it, it just re-established, you know, God has placed me there to help other people grow and through wow. serving and leading them in mm -hmm. that direction, we'll just have them move further. And today I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm starting to reap the benefits from it because it's um, people remember what you have done in their lives and start um, opening doors or calling you or being wanting to talk to you. So it, it's, it's that's what I, I've experienced that, you know, serving for me it's uh and i think also at church uh, i'll try and do more than what i should be doing and um and just to establish my i'm not to establish but it, i'll just get um enjoyment out of it mm. although wow. at times people think ah oh, you know I'm, I'm maybe be overworked or stuff like that but i actually get invigorated by it by, by sure. doing what i do here yeah. and and your gift surely well, I really enjoyed teaching, um, like last night when we got home. Hilton had to sit and he had to re-listen to the message again. Because <laughs> I was like an energy buddy. <laughs> like, come yeah. on, sit and I listen. Um, and I, yeah, just I, just maybe what people can take away from this is as well, what that thing that you've been wanting to do from when you were little, um, that is very much that is is a dominant gift within you. So it might come in a different way, a different package, but the gift is still there. So I truly enjoy um, learning. I enjoy studying. I enjoy um, imparting what I do know. And, um, you know, it's always amazing because the more you learn about Jesus, the word, the more you realize how little you know. And it's when we go out with that uh, point of view that we can never get to a place of pride 
or um, you know, saying, I know it all, I've arrived, mm. because we're always learning and growing every day. Mm. That's so powerful. Yes, I just re revisited um, that again today as well, and it's interesting, Hilton, mine is exactly the same. Leadership and servanthood is, is equally strong, and yeah. then exhortation. So it's very interesting when you are called to be a servant leader. Um, but I was just thinking on this now for those watching us, that the each of us have a responsibility to act according to those uh, mm. giftings and that which God has given us as a treasure, as free. It's part of our DNA. But when we act upon it, like Charlene said, we develop it. We ensure that we get the skill. We become a master in that field, whatever it is then you will find fulfillment in that. And you'll see that it's natural for you to then Amen. have people being drawn unto yeah. you because that if you're a listener, you'll mm -hmm. find people coming to you. They always, maybe from, from young, you don't know why, but people who had problems, they came to you and you just had a way to help them to see from a different vantage point. Or perhaps you'll be able to, you're able to encourage people or you are an extreme giver. You just have this compassion or you can see an opportunity where you can make a difference with your giving, etc. And when I was thinking about the Apostle Paul and his ability to teach, and that makes me think about you so much, Charlene, um, but, but he was a teacher and God has given him that calling. And then he said to him, and I want you to just quickly listen to this in the book of Acts in Acts 26, God is speaking and he says to him, now get on your feet. I've appeared to you because I've appointed you as my servant to witness and tell people. Mm -hmm. So look, he was a scribe. He had a great passion to learn the word and the law that was part of him. But he was applying it for the wrong reasons. And then when he had that great, wonderful encounter with the Lord, he had this knowledge. The scales basically fell off his eyes. And God said to him, that gift that you have to be so passionate, so zealous, you now apply that. And I'm giving you that. I'm appointing you to tell people everywhere. So, so tell people. And it just stood out for me. He says that God appointed and he protected me right up to this point so that I can testify to people. So maybe some of you are watching or listening on the podcast tonight and you don't even understand. You've been through the deepest waters, through the most crazy things, but I sense that the Lord is saying to you that I've kept you, I've protected you. And this testimony, what you carry, is there to help other people. And it's going to come naturally for you as you yield and you surround yourself with the right people who can teach and train and unearth this gift of yours. And then also I'm reminded about um, also an act where God says, don't be afraid, speak out, don't be silent. I'm with you. And he says, no one will attack you or harm you. Many people in the city belongs to me. And that's the same thing that he said to Jeremiah. Remember when, when Jeremiah said, I can't speak, Lord, I'm too young, all kinds of excuses. And I don't know who this is tonight, but maybe you've been having all kinds of excuses. And you say, okay, yes, you four sound like you've got it waxed. You can do the speaking thing or you can do this, whatever it is that you carry. I can't do that. But I want to say to you, let that fall off of you tonight and allow Holy Spirit right now to show you what your gifts are. And then with that urgency, I just feel like Jesus is saying that I'm empowering my people, empowering my bride to be able to speak my wisdom, to speak the oracles. And when you get into his word, he will showcase to you the treasures that's in the word so that you can encourage people. Because you know what? There's people that's desperate in your community, in your household, in your street, and you carry that gift. You know what it is that they need. You've got a key that can unlock the door to their hearts. And that is what I just want to encourage someone tonight, that you carry something. But I feel the Holy Spirit, the unction so strongly. Like he said to Paul and he said to Jeremiah and he said to Timothy, come on, stir up that gift that was in, that's inside of you. Many of us have been in the church for so long. We've been laid, hands have been laid countless times. We've been receiving. We're full of it. And yeah. maybe you're just too afraid to let it out because there's still insecurities or you're thinking, oh my goodness, who am I? He uses the most unlikely people. He specializes in that and he loves you and he will anoint you. And I really pray that tonight that you will reach out even if you wanted to know what your gifts are. There's Charlene wonderful teacher of the word she has the ability to unearth people's gifts so reach out to us send us an email to infodominion.org.za and you know what we can point you in the right direction because we've got so many people that's standing by that want to equip the church you can send us a whatsapp even 
It's very easy. And we'll point you in her direction. Don't let the gift be even put to you on a platter and you're still like, where do I find the help? Here yeah. we are. There's Hilton. I mean, he's a business exactly. specialist. Pastor Kevin, I mean, str- we've got so many giftings that we want to say we are here to help you to walk in dominion and your sphere of influence. So we say to you tonight, we are opening and extending our hand to everyone, wherever you are in the world. Reach out to us. Say, this is what my desire is. Or oh, I'm having a little bit of, I'm, I'm, I'm having a limited mindset, but I want to be in this world. I want to make my voice and my gifts count. So here we are, the four of us and our extended team. And we're saying to you, wherever you are, let us help you. This is not about a church thing. This is a kingdom thing where we want to say, we want to impart what we have freely received. And yeah. um, so that is just what I wanted to share tonight. I'm going to get our children in bed and so forth. But we just want to say that we love you guys. And it's really, there's an urgency um, in the spirit that every single child of God has to take responsibility. We cannot think that someone else must do it. The fivefold is only there to build up the church of God because mm-hmm. all of us are the saints collectively. And you carry something. You might look totally different. You might sound totally different. But that is the beauty of the kingdom, that all of us can bring what we have and we can freely give it out. So I bless you tonight and I want you to take us up on that. The information is on the screen. WhatsApp us. It's so easy. And say, oh, there's something that Charlene said. There's something that Hilton said. There's something Pastor Kevin said, whatever. And Mm. can you teach us? Can you take the time? We've got courses available. So use this. And we just want to say we love you guys. And then from next week, our wonderful... Before we say goodbye to you, I just feel on this particular note, could you just pray over every single person? I just feel that there are people who are watching and and, and, and obviously they are struggling in the area of their identity. They're struggling as it pertains to living a life of purpose. There's many people who literally just watch every day pass them by, every week, every month. And they are even now, again, getting to this place where, yes, it's the joyous time of the year, the most wonderful time of the year, but for many people, this is a time of great anxiety because they are confronted with the fact that this year is about to end and the brand new year is about to start and they look back at what they've produced and do not see much. And it's because they have not done much, it, it's been misplaced, it's been misguided because of a lack of identity and purpose of not knowing the gifts, of not how valuable and how how much of a treasure they actually are. And so before we say goodbye to you, would you just pray over every single one of those who are watching who might be facing these challenges right now? Yes, no problem. I sense that there are people watching tonight and you or wherever you are listening to the rebroadcast and you feel like you are really just overthrown by uh, bondage and sin. And the Bible calls it um, the weight that wants to keep you bound. And you know what? I have this um, saying that I live by that says that action is the antidote to despair. Because when we are sitting in a place of depression and it just gets worse and worse and the devil is in your face to show you your inadequacies and your shortcomings and that your life, it seems like time is just running out and you're getting more and more afraid. Start getting into action um, and surround yourself with people who are where you are or not at this moment. Action is the antidote to despair. You have to put one foot in front of the others. You have to get out there and start serving whatever. But for those um, being just fearful or you might have lost a loved one and your the rug was pulled under your feet or um, maybe your workplace is speaking about retrenching people or they, they have to lay off and all of these things are gnawing at you and you don't really want to tell your family because you don't want to have them stress, etc. But the Fear is grabbing your heart. And um, I just want to remind you today that Jesus is the answer. And we have to get to the end of ourselves because we try so hard to ensure that we keep all the pieces together. And we really cannot do that. And you know what? It comes from a place of surrender. All of us are walking. We are living a life of faith. We are walking a journey of faith every single day. And as we do that, the Lord is opening up new ventures, new doors. But it's only when you take certain steps of action that new doors will be opened, where you meet a person that you think, oh, wow, they're an answer to prayer. So I just want to pray for you right now. And then the rest of the team can minister into your hearts. But as my Bible is open in front of me here in Jeremiah, um, and where God said to Jeremiah, before you're born, I called you. So he is saying to you tonight, 
or today by your name. He's saying to you, I have called you even before your birth, whether you were wanted or not, whether you've made so many mistakes or not. Um, we have this father that is not a man. He doesn't look at us through normal um, human eyes. He has the ability to forgive us and to lift us up and to give us chance upon chance. But I don't want us to be those who just take a chance and be uplifted and then we fall again. No, this is the last time that you've fallen. The lowest place that you might be tonight, I want you to make that decision that this is the lowest that I'll ever be again. I am stepping out into my destiny because these are the promises that Jesus has for me in his word. And, and I will advance because I'm going to eat the word. I'm going to ensure that I obey the word. And um, so I just want to pray for you tonight today father i thank you so much for this audience and we don't know where this word is going but i thank you that you are the god and through your angel armies that you take this word of encouragement tonight to those who are in desperate need of hope those who might have said that lord i don't know if you're real i don't know if you're even going to come through for me lord i have given up all hope and those who might be contemplating suicide or children who have no identity or they're fearing for their lives or young men who don't know what they're going to do maybe tricks that have um they've been writing the exams but they don't know what their future will hold i'm speaking to every anxious heart tonight every broken heart every lonely heart every um broken person who really feel like I'm going through the motions, I'm putting up a mask, but at night I feel like death. And they've been attacked by even um, uh, uh, the devil just coming at them and with fear and anxiety and so forth. And I speak to you right now and I thank you, Jesus, by the power of the blood, that that heavy blanket of depression and fear and darkness lifts right now by the spoken word because we believe in the resurrection of our jesus who came yes. to break the shackles off of your people and tonight that breaking power that that breaker anointing goes forth over every person and we say release them in the name of jesus and i thank you father that your light will shine into their hearts right now that hope will arise and that those Thanks. who have even a little bit of word, that that word will germinate, it will spring forth, and it will come up, and it will bring forth a harvest that these people will step into the fullness of their purpose and their identity. And that those who are crying out to you tonight, Lord, with desperation, that you come and touch them, you come and pluck them out of that situation. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord, that you're almighty and all powerful, that you create opportunities out of nothing. There where people might look at their bank accounts and there is nothing. They are so afraid they might not even have food in their houses tonight. It might be at a point where they say that next week they're taking back my house, my car, my whatever. We're calling upon you, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who comes and does supernatural things. And Lord, we thank you in advance that you come and you bestow your mercy, your grace, your provision, your love, your purposes on every person who is calling out to you tonight. And um, I ask that everyone who will just be reaching out to him don't harden your heart the word says today is the day of salvation today is the day for a fresh start so if you call out to him tonight and you say jesus here i am then i want you to even see with your mind's eye right now and to experience a touch from the holy spirit how he plucks you out of that situation so i come against depression i come against the spirit of death and fear and the spirit of anxiety and the spirit of witchcraft that held you every spirit that might have come through the bloodlines we break your power by the blood of jesus and by our revelation and our relationship with the almighty god and we say that today is the day of your salvation be set free right now in jesus mighty mighty name and i just want to declare over every person right now that this year will end and you will have joy in your mouth this year will end and you will have to say to people around you my god came through for me on the 22nd of november i was hopeless i was in a pit but you know what the word of god came forth and i abided and i took it for myself and i decided that i'm going to follow jesus even though there was no evidence around me and you know what my lord came through for me 
And I'm not just saying this to you because it's airy, fairy things. I'm saying this because I've tasted and seen. I've been in that place. And um, I have seen the Lord coming and lifting me up. And all of us on this broadcast, we have tasted him. We've experienced him. And he loves you so much. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that they will minister further. But may this just be the sign that you've been waiting for. Don't look any further. This mm -hmm. is your sign. And perhaps I'm just feeling that there might be people who are watching. You stopped. Because the Holy Spirit said to you, okay, what is happening here? But you are not Christian. You might be a different faith or you might not even believe God or there's been hurt and lies or, or whatever happened in your youth and when you were small and people hurt you and you made a vow in your heart to say that I will never believe God because it feels like he was not there when I needed him most. I want to say to you, sir, ma'am or young person or older person, that is a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus has always been there. He has guided and pointed you to a place of surrender. And today is the day that he will come. And in a moment of time, he can come and heal your heart. He can come and take all of those calluses, all of that stone that was in your heart, and he can remove it. And he can give you a heart of flesh again, that you'll be able to forgive everyone that hurt you. And that you'll be able to even pronounce forgiveness towards the Lord tonight, because it's not him. He's never one that harms us. He is there to rescue us. He's got a good plan for your life and he loves you so much. I can keep on talking, but I just want to honor everyone on this feed. And I want to say to you, thank you so much that today, tonight, you are making that decision. 2023 will not end in disaster for you. It will be a good Amen. year for you. And the mm -hmm. word says that he crowns his year with glory. So may the fat drip in your life. May goodness and mercy, every seed that you have in the ground, it is coming forth, it is sprouting forth. I pray that you will see with eyes of the Spirit and that you will not be downcast anymore. In Jesus' name, those who could not sleep, those who had insomnia, I sense that there are people that couldn't sleep because of fear and anxiety, you've been lying awake at night. From tonight, you will sleep soundly and you know you will have that peace because God says that He goes to work when His beloved are sleeping soundly. This is my portion for tonight. Love you much. Thank you. Bye bye, Donkey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Oh, well, I must say that was really powerful. <laughs> Everything that she had shared. And um, I just want to put this out there for, for those who are watching. Um, I just feel to just say this, and this is not to, to put in a, a stick at all, but if you would like to really get your year off to a winning start or even already in anticipation of the best year of your life I would at least my book into your hand so you can go to dominion.org.za forward slash you can go and get it and um, there is also the pdf version available and hey if you absolutely say pastor kevin i do not have a cent to my name there is no way that i can even pay for something right now well then just get in touch with me okay i do not finance right now to get in the way of you living a life of dominion authority and power and also i mean if you cannot afford 150 bucks right now well i'm here to say to you that this will be the last time in your life that 150 rand or 250 rand seems like a way too much of a stretch for you we are children of god the Bible declares that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That the gold is mine and the silver is mine, says the Lord. That he is the one who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And so that is the God that we serve. I mean, he is the one who, who not only breathed the stars into existence, but he one of the, what we, from our perspective, would refer to as countless number of stars. He calls the countless number stars by name and so i want us to get rid of this idea that we are just these beggars that we are just these grifters that we are always just looking to the world for a handout we are supposed to be the city on a hill hidden in other words we are to draw people to ourselves from the perspective of shining that light so that when they look at us we can immediately say but god but yeah. Jesus, look at him, look at Jesus. He is the author and the perfecter of my faith. And so he can also be that for you. But sadly, many Christians draw attention to themselves uh, because of their soppy story, because of their, 
uh, how the cards that they were dealt in life and all of these different things. And, you know, that is exactly what was even behind the message that I was sharing on Sunday, uh, which mm-hmm. in essence was just going to be part of receiving the morning's offering and giving people an opportunity to sow to get fertile seed into the ground. And yet that was just really what ended up being the the heart of of, of for every single one of us on Sunday. And it was incredible to see the response, both inside of the venue, but also outside, getting the reactions and seeing the comments and, and receiving the feedback. And now, obviously, people would say, well, it's not about the people's reactions. You know, we preach what we preach without the affirmation or reaction of people. It's I'm not talking about that. But incredible to see the fact that people, what encouraged me, uh, Hilton and Charlene, was the fact that I could see on Sunday, even those physically in attendance, how they were grabbing a hold of this message by faith and making that decision consciously to walk in dominion, to make sure that they strip themselves of the past, to make sure that they that they get rid of that old beggar mindset and mm-hmm. even bigger look and feel and demeanor about them because it's one thing to to sound poor but another thing altogether to look poor and even sort of smell poor and that is what Bartimaeus did he got rid of everything that resembled his past even before before he had actually said the first word to Jesus by means of conversation in other words he already stripped himself off that cloak in anticipation of the encounter and what was going to through that encounter with Jesus, knowing that after this encounter that I'm heading into right now, everything is going to change. If yeah. we as Christians could just grab a hold of this, that even coming this Sunday when we go to church, that even tonight as we are here in his presence, mm-hmm. that tomorrow night when we get together, any other time, not just a Sunday or Sunday evening, but any time we get together, there should be an expectation, an anticipation that we're going to meet with God, that I'm not going to leave the same way that I've come. Come on, that is supposed to be the attitude and the anticipation in every one of our hearts. Isn't that true, Hilton and Charlene? Yes, you know, Pastor Kevin, as you were speaking and saying the expectation, I was actually writing it down here. Um, Just the word expectation because I wanted to bring that in Um, because uh, Jesus says, what is it that you want me to do for you? And we have to be able to tell him, this is what I need. This is what I want, Lord, because um, God really knows what we need, but he still needs us to say it um, because we have to declare our dependency on him and we have to take the first step and action when it comes to faith. So faith is speaking out and saying, I believe you can do this for me, Lord, and therefore I trust you for this. Just like we see in this example as well, because Jesus said to Bartimaeus, what is it that you want me to do for you? So that expectation and just making a firm decision to say, you know what, I'm going to choose to live every day um, in, in, in the attitude of faith. And, um, To live in daytight compartments, like, yes, we plan for the future, we ponder on the future, we imagine our future, but we also live in the reality of today, and that reality is, I can do all things through Christ. That reality is, He is in my situation. That reality is, He is in my right now, and He's in my future, and He's all over. So, you know, just being hungry, and I think as individuals and as a body of Christ, um, you know, we, we're on a journey to discover that more hunger within us because it's at that place where Christ will really meet us and take us further beyond our wildest dreams. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it's just um, uh, what Charlene said, and it, it just flows from you know, the message last Sunday, you know, from um, I think Paul Lemire thought he knew God will heal him. And that's why in that anticipation, expectation, he threw off his cloak and, and approached him. Um, and without any doubt, he approached Christ knowing that he will heal me. And that faith is a difference between, us. I believe what you said last week, it's a difference between can and will. 
you know, sometimes exactly. you can. I, I think people, you still doubt of it, but if you know it will happen, you will grab it with both hands, and that's what he did. He grabbed it. And, and then even that, that last yeah. step, which is, must happen. It yes. must happen. Yes. There is yeah. no doubt. It, <laughs> I know it can happen, and it, it's not a matter of it will happen. This just it, must, it must happen. happen. It yes. has yeah. to be that I yeah. believe God. I take him at his word. And, and you see, that is tenacity that yeah. for me is just lacking overall among yeah. Christians. You know, where Jesus commended the Phoenicians faith because mm. she's not gonna give up you know yeah. jesus even referring to her as in essence referring to her as a dog but she was mm. not going to be offended she was not going to be silenced and as yeah. bartimaeus you know you know the bible speaks of the fact that they were those the disciples but even jesus is shut up keep quiet mm. keep quiet yeah. man and and he was just he held even yeah. louder jesus yeah. son of david and and, yeah. and that is something that, that we as Christians need to grab a hold of, you know, um, because so many Christians are just these, you know, two goody uh, two shoes or uh, yeah. how, how would they say it? You know, it's, it's just like they're just such nice people. You know, yeah. the world says, keep quiet and like, okay, so sorry. sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. If you know, if you know what you're after, if you mm. know the walk that you have walked, no one else has walked in your shoes. You know what it is that you have gone through. You know what it is that you have been through. You know what it is that you've been praying for. Where where have your naysayers been? They're telling you, you know, you too loud. Keep quiet. Where were they two o'clock in the morning when you were bawling yeah. your eyes out in the presence of God? Where were they when, when you were consecrated? You were setting yourself apart and setting yourself up for the success and the breakthrough and the victory you are entering into now they were nowhere to be found they were nowhere to be seen and they were nowhere to be heard you know so that is something which is very very important even the other day i i, I saw a, a message that a friend of mine also in the ministry sent me uh he sent me this whatsapp message he said to me something along the lines of you know he he's he's actually quite conscious of those who are phoning him or who those who are speaking with him now because mm -hmm. the moment the success comes and the breakthrough comes and people begin to see who he is mingling with, you know, and, and who is associating with and, you know, where he's preaching and the doors that have opened up for him, then all of a sudden, you know, his, his, um, his phone doesn't stop ringing. His phone doesn't stop, you know, buzzing with all the messages that are coming through. Hey, good friend, how are you? You know, I see God is doing exciting things in your life. Hey, I always knew that you were yeah. going places. I always knew that God had his hand on you. But where were you during the yeah. formation? Years? Where were you? Yeah. Times of testing, of time, of trouble, and trial and tribulation. And also, let me say this to you. I, I didn't even get into this, Hilton and Charlene, on this. But isn't it interesting? How you refer to the story? Now, I'm obviously conscious about this, so this is why I spoke of Bartimaeus. But typically, how is Bartimaeus portrayed by anyone, really, for that matter today? When we talk about the story of Bartimaeus, they say the story of and Bartimaeus. Hmm. In some ways, we all talk about, you know, the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. That was the condition before Jesus. That was hmm. the condition before. And... In, in other words, you know, when we consider even the woman with the issue of, because obviously the Bible doesn't give her a name. So yeah. you, you could be forgiven for the fact of mentioning that because that was a key characteristic of this woman. And then obviously, yes, we know that Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you whole. And as a result, obviously everything had dried up. She was perfectly cured, whole, healed, delivered, set free. But Bartimaeus has a name. He, his mm. name is Bartimaeus. We mm. love to add the descriptive, the blind Bartimaeus. And the sad thing is, is that after that encounter, he was blind no more. Yeah. But we still refer to him, even now, mm. 2,000 years later, after the fact, still as blind Bartimaeus. He, he, he was not blind after that encounter. And so here's yeah. the crux and here's the key. There are many people who would know you or might have heard of you or the conditions or the challenges or the things that you had faced. 
In other words, it comes down to this. Even after the breakthrough, there will be those who will still look at you and still refer to you from the perspective of where you were, of the perspective yeah. of where you've been, of the things that you, the things that you got up to or the things that happened to you. You know, you are no longer that person, that victim. You are no longer the person that was bankrupt. You are no longer yeah. that person that failed to start that business or to keep that business going. You, you're no longer that unsuccessful this or that. You're no longer the pastor who gave up. You're no longer mm -hmm. the person who burnt out. You're no longer the person who lost his home. You're no longer, you know, no longer that college or university dropout. Yeah. And so my encouragement to each and every one is you are not that person anymore. That by the grace of God and by his favor that has located you, that has come to you, and even that which God has established in you and then ultimately through you, you are no longer there. That's no longer supposed to be something synonymous with you. I mean, it's like referring to Joseph as, you know, Joseph, the man in the pit. No, he, he's yeah. no longer in the pit. He was only there for a short little while. Joseph, the man in the prison, he wasn't there forever. Hey, he might have been there for a long time. But nonetheless, I mean, he became Joseph the Prime Minister. And, yeah. and, and so this is also just my encouragement to everyone. You are not your past. Your past does not have to define who you are. Your past does not have to define you to the point of dictating what your destiny is going to potentially look like. And yeah. so I just feel, even right now, the anointing of God on this particular point. As I get to get to you and declare. To hear this, hear this even, incline your ear in the realm of the spirit as you hear tonight, once and for all, that you are not your past. For no. those who are in Christ are a new creation. And I pray that the new creation reality, the revelation is to be a new creation, that that will come to the fore, that that will come to pass, and that will be made manifest in you and be evidenced through you in Jesus name. Yeah. You know, Hilton Charlene, isn't it incredible that we know that that one encounter with Jesus and if we really mean business with God, you know, he means business with us. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Jesus and, and his spirit will always back us up. And you know what? I just also sense, Pastor, given that a lot of times people might be Christian. They might have made the decision to follow Christ, but they've, they've fallen out of fellowship with him. So they, they're still going to go to heaven. They're still washed by the blood and all of that. But we've never gone through a process of sanctification. We've never allowed ourselves to be washed by the word. We've never allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and point out areas in our life that might still be dark or rooms that we've kind of kept closed because of hurt or That's trauma. Right. And we don't want to go there. And now we feel unworthy um, for God to use us because what if people know? So the best thing is just to come clean because God knows in any case. But just exactly. open your mouth and just say, Lord, mm. I'm sorry. I want you to take this thing from me. Lord, I confess. I repent of this. I ask you to come and heal me and get support um, with you. Get into a local church. Get uh, with some people that can help you and really teach you along the way and be with you and help you through a process of healing and deliverance so that you can be set up for success and move into the fullness right. of what God has for you so that you do not have to go through a, a life of shame and think, well, someone's going to find this out at some point in time. And you know what? We have to deal with that because even if, if God moves us on, there will be a crucial time where the enemy will Take that stuff and he will bring it out if we don't repent of it. And then there's just so much bigger damage that's done to yourself and to the kingdom. And really just um, repenting of it, saying, Lord, I choose to no longer go down this route. Um, I choose for you to come and heal me and set mm -hmm. me free and to make my areas of my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, mm -hmm. to make that whole as well. And to get him into the word daily. We cannot let a day slip without being in the word. And not just reading for the sake of reading, but reading to see what are you telling me, Jesus? Even if you just take 10 minutes after mm. you've read and you write down one or two things that the Holy Spirit has prompted you while you were reading. And then you go and do that specifically in the days to come starting immediately. 
it already makes a big difference because it also builds your confidence in a way. Yeah. Amen. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, speaking as, as I was just, and even as you're speaking now, Charlene, I want to just put this out there because I just feel even tonight as, as, as people, the ears, the calluses are just being stripped off. I mean, without us even, uh, you know, pinpoint those things and specifically speaking to those things you know these things already just by the anointing of God these things are falling off people and I just feel in my heart and even in my spirit that people are being called not only and I'm not just talking about those who who, who are stepping into the kingdom of God born again believe I'm speaking tonight you know what been happening is we just speaking born again believers you know we're speaking to those already who who have that relationship with jesus but you know that you are living a life of mediocrity you are living this average life and even in your in your faith walk it's it's really just average walk around you might not even know that you are a christian that there's nothing really christ-like that is coming to the fourth and i'm not saying this from the place of condemnation i'm saying this to you because Every single one of us are supposed to bear fruit, to bear mm. much fruit right there where we may find ourselves. And so right now, what I want to do is I want to give every single one an opportunity who say, you know, I, I feel the call for me to become more, to become great. For maybe even for those to say, you know what, I want to step into the ministry. I don't even know where to start. Well, you know what? This is why we launched the Dominion Bible School. And I want to give each of you an opportunity tonight to understand what this is all about. Because even right at the start, as my wife, you would know as Pastor Chantel, as she was sharing, as she was ministering also so powerfully, one of the things that came to light was the fact that there are so many Christians even who still, they, they I mean, you speak of spiritual gifts and understanding your spiritual there were those who would listen to that and they would still think like, well, that's news to me. I didn't even, have, I didn't even know you had gifts. I just thought, you know, the spirit give gifts as he as he wants and as he pleases. And, you know, that's sort of up to him. And, you know, maybe I didn't get any. <laughs> yeah. That is the attitude so many Christians have when it comes down to this. Or they might think, well, you know, that's obviously speaking of uh, that's not me. Well, I want you to discover the truth. And this is why I want to give you an opportunity. Go to the web. BibleSchool.com, and I want you to start. If you do not have any any prior academic background or history, then you're going to start right here. With the certificate in ministry, and I want to show you something just quickly. This is the curriculum. This is for the certificate. Christian foundations. No, no, the fivefold prayer, Old Testament and New Testament survey. Christian ethics, releasing your divine call, biblical excellence. The spiritual harvest and then also spiritual battlefields. You know, I've actually come to the realization that this is something that, you know, even we as Dominion Church are going to pretty much require all of our members. And then if you want to step into a leadership role at Dominion Church, then the Diploma in Ministry, the next program, is going to be something that's going to be, I want to say, compulsory. Look at this curriculum, Learning to Lead in Ministry, the Book of Ephesians, Supernatural Healing and Health, Supernatural Gifts, Praise and Worship, Preparing for Ministry, Kingdom Principles, Anointed for Ministry, the 21st Century Church, and then also Environmental Analysis. That's where you start to get an understanding of what it means to have dominion and to operate in the authority and power that's given us. And so, missions are open. It's open anytime. You can start anytime. You can start from anywhere. And um, we operate already by a partnership we've entered into with a university based in the United States of America. You can find technical and legal and whatever details on our website. So I'm not going to go into that mm -hmm. so much other than to just say to you that there are many people already well, many people from many different nations. And this is an opportunity for you to say, I want to great this is what my, uh, the tagline of the school is grassroots to greatness so it doesn't matter where you start that you can indeed 
step into greatness. Yeah. And so this is an opportunity. And then today there were those who said to me, Pastor Kevin, I'd like to study. I just don't have the finances. I'm telling you, we always try. Well, we, we don't try. We, we make a plan and committed to making and finding a plan. And I never want anyone to say, well, because of finances, you're not able to study and this and that. But also, I, I want you to hear this tonight. This, is, this doesn't mean that what I'm saying right now, that it means, you know, you've got the finances, but now because of a poverty spirit, you just want to, well, Pastor Kevin, I just want everything for free. You know, this is a church. This is Bible. So it just has to be free. Understand there are fees that we incur in just providing all of this for you. That's not even uh, counting the cost of of the curriculum and the this and the that and there will be those who will say well all you need is the bible well then by all means just go and read the bible but if you are serious about stepping into greatness if you are serious about and and this is obviously for anyone outside of dominion church so um, i mean your pastor if you tell him that you enrolled for the certificate or the diploma course i mean i, I promise you i promise you i can guarantee you and pastors i can guarantee you that your members, and even as a pastor, you're going to thank me that your members of your congregation signed up, that they enrolled, and that they completed these studies. Because I'm telling you, they are going to be such a big, and they are going to be able to do such incredible things within the church. And that's really what it's all about. For those who say, well, I don't really want to go into ministry you know, this is, again, this is who we are about. This is what we're about mm -hmm. as Dominion. It's about raising people up, equipping them so that they can shine, impact, and influence their obvious influence with the message of the King, Jesus, and his kingdom. And so I want to give you an opportunity involved to apply and to get your application in so that you can start. You don't have to, don't delay, don't wait until 2024, because by then there will be other priorities and other things. Make sure that when God calls, when God speaks, obey his spirit and his voice promptly. That means immediately. Why? Because mm -hmm. even delay is mm -hmm. disobedience. And then also tonight, I just feel that there might be those who are watching. And you know what? You, you might even hear, as I said, that there might be those who would inquire, as they do, might not have the funds, but you would like to even sponsor a student. You'd like to, you know, be a part of this. Well, you can also go and you can go to the website, dominion.org.la forward slash give. And you can so even just put the reference right there, Dominion Bible School, spon student sponsor, whatever you'd like to do. And you too can put seed into the ground. And then I also want to give you an opportunity. This is for me and every individual, even those representing businesses here, organizations, ministries, churches that are watching. You have heard all that we do. You have heard the vision. You have heard the mandate. And once more, we are extending our hands saying, let's do this together. This mm -hmm. is an opportunity to get fertile or to get seed into fertile soil. This is an opportunity for you to already as we prepare to go into 2024 to concentrate this yeah. new year, to say, Lord, I'm in this new year, 2024, expecting a harvest. Why? Because I already have seed, quality seed in quality soil. So this is an opportunity. And in a moment, I'll ask Charlene to pray over every single one that is sowing seed tonight, everyone that is stepping up and saying, you know what, we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And even those who might be wanting to partner with us, to be among, we are believing for 300 monthly partners. Well, we have partners. We've got partners and friends from various parts of South Africa and even the nations of the world. But we are believing to get to 300 there's something really powerful and significant about that. Even when you consider Gideon's 300, it might be a small little group of people, but I'm telling you, 300 people, 300 dominioneers who are willing to go to go the distance with God, I'm telling you, that is when you truly become unstoppable. Something that Hilton can absolutely relate to. <laughs> and so if this is you tonight and you want to be a part of this by either 
joining us on a monthly basis, taking hands with us, standing with us in faith, praying with us, praying for us, because we truly are pioneering. We are in the territory and navigating uncharted waters, but we are doing what we are doing by the grace of God, by the hand of God, by God's divine instruction. And uh, it's a delight to be of service to the Lord. But you can come and join us. One can put a thousand to fly, two, ten thousand. So join us. Take our hands. Let's go on the journey together and become a dominioneer, pioneering alongside us. Or, as we said, you can go, you can make a once-off gift, and you can sow that seed to invest in the kingdom of God, to invest in the harvesting of souls. And you can go to dominion.org.za forward slash give, or otherwise, just make use of the details right there on the screen. So, Sean, would you just pray over everything that has been watching, even as we close tonight, but also just praying over everyone who is making this decision to either partner or just as a once-off gift, getting seed in the ground in preparation for the fullness of God, of that which he has for them as they step into greatness and in 2024. Amen. Yes, come on, where you are, let's just close our eyes and attach our faith to what, what Jesus has been speaking to us tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your precious people. I thank you for everyone that has heard this broadcast, who will still listen to this broadcast in the days to come. And I thank you for faith that is within their spirits and that bubbles up right now, Lord God. And I thank you that you create for us the opportunity to sow seed because seed must bring forth a harvest, Lord. And I pray that at the appointed time that the seed will germinate, it will grow and it will produce a harvest, Lord. It will produce so much that they will not have room enough to contain it, Lord. I thank you for your blessing that finds them, that locates them. I thank you, Lord, that they are blessed in every area of their life, in spirit, in soul, in body, in finance, in business, in their marriage, in whatever circle of influence they are, Lord. I pray that you will expand their territory, Lord. I thank you that your grace and your anointing rest upon them, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that there is no mindset here that says, Lord, I am in need, but Lord, a mindset that says, I am a giver because you have enabled us to be givers. Lord, and I thank you that we are able to bless others. I thank you that finance will flow through us to build your kingdom and to help others achieve greatness, Lord. And I thank you for everyone that's joined tonight. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will go and that you will minister to them the word that has been spoken tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you will show them exactly in every area of their life how to apply faith, how to become a person of greatness, Lord. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in our lives. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy that surrounds us. We give you all the glory and the praise. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you daily teach us by your spirit what it is to walk in identity, what it is to walk in dominion. May we go forth and may we be the light in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Hilton and Charlene, and also to Pastor Chantel, who was joining us a little bit earlier. Um, I really enjoyed tonight. It was like all encompassing. So much has been happening. So much was said. And um, wow, what a fantastic, fantastic way to also just wrap things up for this evening and uh, just to, you know, see everything the Lord has done. And uh, what an awesome, awesome evening it has been. So, Charlene, any final word from you? Final greetings to everyone who's still on? Yes, I'm just trying to see who's on here. You know, I don't have my specs on, so I have to go a little bit closer to make sure I see all the names. But so yes, so Brian just, was uh, saying he loves this, and then uh, there's a quite a bit of others who's also here. Uh, Kogi Chetty, who's also still here. Um, yeah. There's teams, and then obviously we we irritated the demons of everyone on Twitch and uh, <laughs> kicked them. Again. That's wonderful. So, We're taking. <laughs> yes i think it's yeah, just no, no, the, no, they are twitching their demons are twitching on twitch <laughs> you know it's, it's really a fantastic time 
to be alive. Uh, sometimes we say this and we, we, we can always become like a cliche, but uh, your best life is now. Um, the best opportunities, grab the opportunities, run with what God has for you. Don't say one day when I'm older, um, don't say I should have done things when I was younger, but now is the time. Um, yeah. Because there is, there's an appointed time, there's a season for things to happen in your life. And, and if you feel a stirring and a nudging of the Spirit within you to do anything, then do it. Um, because, you know, God will take you um, places, but you need to extend your faith and you need to ensure that you always give Him all the glory. And just surround yourself with people of faith. It's it's so important to, to not just be in a church that, but to be part of a church, to really adopt the vision and to make it your own and to run with it like, you know, this is it. And, and God will continuously surprise you um, with his love and his grace and his, his gifts in your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, there we have it. Everyone else who's uh, still on, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, also tomorrow night, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to be live with my father, so uh, it's going to be a wonderful time, and that's going to be taking place uh, Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Africa time, as per usual, and um, I'm very excited to be with him tomorrow night, and we also have a very uh, special, well, a very special guest, in fact, tomorrow night, uh, who's also going to be gracing us with his presence, and uh, we're going to be sharing, talking about some really exciting things. So, all this week just uh the lord just showing us uh different ways of of reaching people and um to see that there is really not one right way per se um but that there, there are multiple methods it's the same lord it's the same gospel but different ways of delivering this message to the people of this world and that is incredible you know, you know this week uh before where I, where I had to speak cryptically just due to the nature of what it is that we're doing um, I don't know if you remember that live that I did, maybe it was about two months ago or so, where mm -hmm. I spoke of that, which uh, I got involved with, uh, a f you know, a few years back, um, with regards to taking the gospel by means of these digital Bibles into territories that are closed, you know, that, that are persecuted. So you, you're not able to move in with physical Bibles. So by means of certain digital means, um, you know, we're able to distribute the Bibles digitally um, across these nations that typically are closed off. And just yesterday, I got some more information. And, and let me just tell you, um, what I can tell you broadly is that when you consider that there, there are these like very high mountains there in Asia, and then just those countries that are sort of like right under it and underneath it and around it, you know, um, Areas that are just not accessible due to the not only the terrain but also due to the and to see the reports that are coming through from people. And I'm not just talking about stats, I'm talking about actual you know, they managed to get photos and videos of people actually getting, um, you know, the gospel and and by means of this digital distribution. So this just blessed me, and so I realized just once more, you know what, truly, I'm gonna get heaven and there's going to be people there. you know what kevin it's because of that work that you did because of that coding because of this that you did back then you know still doing that that i'm here that my family is here that my you know my neighbors are here we are here because of that work that you did all the way from there from humble south africa um we don't even speak the same language <laughs> or we didn't while we were on this earth you know but it just is incredible and i'm just saying this in light of what you were saying as well charlene about living in the 21st century being alive in 2023 um what a time to be alive mm -hmm. and let us apply ourselves to to doing what the lord has called us to do no matter how big no matter how small because really when it comes down to doing the the, the lord business or being about the lord there is nothing ever insignificant there is there is no task too big or a task too mundane or too that in the end we do what we do as worship unto the Lord and that's what it comes down to so let that be my final word and message to everyone and I'll see you all again tomorrow night 8 p.m. Central Africa time so Hilton and Shaleen bye donkey and everyone else will see you on the next